Let's talk stem cells as well. What's what's going on? Because that's like the future, right? The whole idea behind our clinic, Proactive Longevity, and we talked about this in our podcast, Forever Young, because we were going to go through each one of these in detail. So the idea is, if you your car, your body is like an older car, and and you've She's seen like, an older mine. car. No, <laughs> I was like, Maybe yeah, I know. Too. I was like, it is. That's exactly <laughs> you how know, I feel. It, it is. Look, it's the more miles it gets on it, you see dings in the paint, you cracks in the windshield, and and your tank's empty, right? And so what we're saying is that you can manage the trajectory of aging in three D. We say detox, defend, and deliver vitality. The detox is the plasma exchange. The defend is something called natural killer cell therapy. We draw your blood. We send it to a lab. You have natural killer cells, which destroy viral infected cells and cancer cells. Then we grow them, and now we re-inject them into the body. So imagine you've got, instead you took 10 soldiers, multiply it to a million, and then you inject it into your system. So that is kind of the windshield wipers of the car, because now... You can focus on where you're going. Your immune system can focus on where it's going rather than looking at the bug that splattered on the windshield. And then stem cells is really filling the tank. I mean, as we age, your stem cell capacity and uh, their their number uh, decrease rapidly. And so we're kind of filling the tank, but not just with any old stem cells. It's going to be the youngest potential version. We're not doing embryonic stem cells, but day one. And so the idea is you're giving someone, you know, stem cells are really, they do two things. They replicate themselves and they form any tissue in the body, a true stem cell. And so, you know, that um, now there are different versions of these where we can get into, you know, whether they're fat derived or they're bone marrow derived or blood derived and, and what they can form. But the real idea behind stem cells and exosomes, exosomes are really the messengers, the tiny little vesicles that carry the information from cell to cell. So it's kind of like the baton in a relay. The combination of these things we're doing is we're taking umbilical cord stem cells or a very young or strong, resilient stem cell, and then you give the exosomes with it so it transfers all that data to your cells, right? Without transferring DNA or anything you know uh, that, that's going to be harmful to yourself. It's really just replenishing and giving new information because over time, you know, again, it's like you're, the tread on your tires, it slowly burns. And if you can put brand new tires on there, why wouldn't you? What is the ideal age if there is one or in an ideal world? When would somebody start doing all of this? If cost wasn't an issue, <sighs> as early as possible. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it. It's, it's look. We, there are certain things that we peak at early. You know, even looking at the male uh, who, that peaks at eighteen, when you look at hormonal levels and activity and and the ability to procreate, things like that, we, you peak at eighteen. I peaked I, at thirty-two. And that's 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 you, pretty you, good. That's yeah. and, and that's really <laughs> that's very common. So mm-hmm. for females, it's much later. The idea is if here's the, the problem, the problem is that, you know, if you think about it, like when the first plasma Botox screen came, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you think about the first plasma screen, it was $15,000, $20,000. Now you get a TV for 300 bucks. That's the limiting factor right now is that the, to make stem cells, good stem cells, ones that are, you know, they, they come from a very strong, uh, you know, donor, the ones that have been screened for all potential diseases. And then isolated in a lab, it costs a lot of money. So, you know, really the cost may be the precluding factor. I think if you can do it in your 40s, phenomenal. Okay. If you, you can know, do it earlier. That's later than I thought you were going to say. Well, though. if you can do it earlier, great. But I would say at least by your 40s. Mm-hmm. Because things don't really start breaking down until we start 40, right? And then all of a sudden you say, oh, you know what? That hurt when I, you know, went for a jog or this, you know, the, the recovery lasts longer. The idea is you want to fill that tank. And not everybody comes in for longevity, right? Mm -hmm. The impetus for most people to get stem cells over the last 20 plus years, I mean, really it's been in vogue, started the last couple of years, but the last 20 plus years has been for injury. It's always been for injury, or it's been a last ditch effort to try to fix something that has no other therapy. You know, uh, everyone's heard of the trip Kobe Bryant took to Germany to inject his Achilles or how people get, uh, you know, stem cells in their hips or their knees or their shoulders. 10 years ago, sure, people were doing it a lot more experimentally. 
Now we know it works. We inject people with either fluoroscopy, which is under like an x-ray guided or an ultrasound into joints with tears, with something called Muse stem cells, which are the best of the best, the fanciest stem cells out there. And we get phone calls from people saying, I'm totally fine. I feel okay. People that, and again, I've been the biggest skeptic um, out of all of our partners. I always am like, you know, I like to call. Um, but now all of that has been, you know, I've changed my mind a lot because, you know, you can actually see the difference or you can actually have people call you and feel the difference. We do stem cell facials, for example. So microneedling and PRP, for example, but imagine microneedling with stem cells. And when people get it, and, and you know this as well as I do, they'll be like, it really burned. It felt different than when I do the salmon sperm or when I do the PRP or when I'm doing exosomes. When you do the stem cells, it's really different. So there's clear difference between doing it just for longevity versus doing it for treatment. I'm not a big fan of treating it for using it for like neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's or, or any type of spinal cord injuries and things like that. I don't think it's magic. Well, even though now, now I mean, they're getting now, better, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, now there's so many clinical trials that are geared towards neurodegenerative disorders and showing that it's reversing or, or treating. There was a recent study that, or re recent clinical trial where they injected 10 patients who had spinal cord injuries and five of them can walk again. Yeah. So, I mean, it's these crazy. Are, it really is you know, crazy. This, is the, this is the future of medicine. And again, you can take what's called a myocyte, which is a, a, a muscle cell of the heart, let's say. And if you get the stem cells that are, are specific to that, somebody who's had a heart attack that has had an area of the muscle that has died, you inject into that area and you can see that muscle regenerate. And that's what stem cells really are. So imagine if you can put it in as an IV and then it goes to wherever the problem is, and that's the whole theory, and it repairs it. And that's the theory of doing the 3Ds is to take stuff away, then take stuff away so you can treat later, and then fill your tank up with really good stem cells. And unfortunately, you know, we can't do it here in our backyard. And yeah. that's the handcuff that's and happening right cells, now. Stem cells, right? But you can do the other? You can do you can the do other TPE. two things, yes. You can do natural... Yeah. You're doing TPE too. next well, week in our uh, office. <laughs> TPE at our office. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing both of them at the same yeah, exactly. time. Oh, it's going like this right now. <laughs> <laughs> little BPC over here. I know, I gotta, oh, I gotta, gotta look good over. before my Euro trip. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. When, is, when is the Euro trip starting? June 3rd. You're gone for how long? Five and a half weeks. We've got less than <laughs> yeah. a month. We've got two weeks oh. to get to it. Okay, done. I hear Eye of the Tiger playing yeah, in my yeah, head right for now. For sure. <laughs> we're going to have a play in the office. You love it. Come in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll document all of it. Let's yeah. do it. Honestly, that'd be so cool if, if you actually did TPE and then crazy. all of a sudden did Botox and it was fine. Oh my God. Or Are there risks have... to TPE? Let's, let's how long? start there. Is it how long? No, how are there uh, risks? The risk, usually yeah. in a healthy individual, especially. I mean, you have to imagine TPE is for used you. For, I don't know. Yeah. Let's talk about yeah. it. redness at the site, you know, pain and discomfort at the IV site. I mean, you're using relatively large bore needles. There's no major fluid shift. Some people afterwards, you know, you can get headaches, or you know, we're worried more about filling you with enough calcium because sometimes the plasma and the binder takes away some of your calcium. So every now and then, you can get little paresthesias or pins and needles on your hands and around the mouth. But usually, we supply you with enough of that, but I, I don't see any major downside. You know, the idea- As long as you have good veins. You, mm -hmm. you need, yes, you need, you need, you need good, good venous access. On this arm, yeah. We'll make yeah. you work. I have a spray oh, those are, right now. That's but, perfect. You're yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, have you, we'll have you do some push-ups. Yeah. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I'm in yeah. my, I'm back in my workout era. So okay. let's do that before. Yeah, we, sure. we make sure people are well hydrated for the three days before. And there's this whole protocol. We, we get labs- so we can follow you before and after. But so far, the only negative we've seen is the people who do not have vena, good venous access, they can't complete the therapy. Like, I'd just, love to see your labs, I have especially so your, many. your histamine profile, your yeah. mast cells, right. to see what would happen before and after. I see my doctor tomorrow. Perfect. So Even I the can... BPAs from, from you know, heavy metals and BPAs from plastics. I mean, it'd be wow. interesting mm -hmm. to see how high wow. yours were. Like do like a total tox? Absolutely. Okay. Well, no, this, this clears it. TPE clears yeah. all of that. It's so. one of the mainstays right now for long COVID. So people that have long COVID, they couldn't do anything about it. And then they started doing this and, and said, wow, this really is, because all the junk sits in our plasma. Yeah. So those are the well, triggers. I had a doc, I had somebody on recently who was, 
talking about the connection between long COVID and mast cell. And she said it's appearing more likely that long COVID is some kind of mast cell dysfunction. They're very interrelated. See, there you go. So, yeah, so, same portion yeah. of the immune system. And they're okay. treating long COVID with Pepsid. I saw oh, some study go. about that. So it could with be success. And that's like see, something that's, that you take for, you know, so, yeah, yeah. All so, so it really stabilizes the, the histamine release. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're done. Okay. We, we, found, <laughs> we found your problem. Yeah, thank, thank you, everybody. Good. Goodbye. Thank you. We're <laughs> going to do um, TV right now. I got lots of Report Botox back. for you. Yeah. We're not going to use Botox. We'll use something else. Yeah, what do you like to use? I love Juvo. Yeah. Juvo, I think Juvo why? is great. It's softer. I feel like, you know, you know when you used to get Botox and sometimes you felt like you couldn't move at all I and it was love so, that. you like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, um, Just fiending I like, for I it. I like it so it's a little bit softer. But again, you can put enough where you can you won't move at mm -hmm. all. So that's kind of why I like it. Really what about hard. like myoblock? But uh, isn't that botulinum B? Yes. Like, okay. Um myoblock's hard to get. I mm -hmm. hate to say it. Latibo's out. I think the And Latibo's the, supposed to be quote unquote cleaner. Cleaner. Right? Yeah, da but Daxify, the, we it, tried. It, it is, but you saw those head to heads. I didn't like Daxify. You know yeah, they, I don't either. they do the non inferiority yes. study of Latibo and it was it was less than, it was underwhelming, really? we'll say. Yes. Juvo, to me, has the strongest profile. We'll do a split face study on you. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, if I ever did this, I would have to start with like eight the units. The smallest right. amount. Yeah, no, I for mean, sure. Like, but you don't really have... My friend have was like, you can do 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. Yeah. That's yeah. where I would start. Forehead I could do later. Are yeah. you sure you weren't a nurse injector or a plastic surgeon in the past? <laughs> <laughs> this is, I love this stuff. I mean, but I could talk great, about though. this all day. It's good to, to, to yeah. like that. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs>